what is up guys and welcome back we're going to do another tutorial today but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the look that you can see here um, so this is a water simulation that we're going to try to get um, with a fluid motion an organic feel and um, very simple material that anybody that has Cinema 40 already has so all this is is um, we have an emitter and and a few other little things and we can uh, create this this water look here alright so uh, let's jump on into it so the first thing that I want to show you guys is um, the main part of this and it is the um, meta ball so this thing here which is under the array one and just to show you guys what exactly this does is I'm just gonna um, take four spheres or just a bunch of spheres in, in this case just gonna place them randomly um, can raise some can lower some, can make some a little bit uh, smaller make one a bit bigger either way so we have this collection of objects. You can use this for any object, but it works best with spheres. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to we are going to highlight all of our spheres and we're just going to drag it as a child of the meta ball. And what this thing does is it kind of um, merges everything together into this blob that we can see here. And you can select individual um, spheres in here and you can move them around, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, just a bunch of stuff. Anyways, so that's what the meta ball does. And when we render this, it still looks pretty rough. Um, it, you can see all the, the edges, and that's because it doesn't have an overly amount of um, polygons right now. So this is the amount of polygons it's trying to form um, fluid shapes with and you can actually up that very easily by just clicking on the meta ball and under editor subdivision so this number here the lower it is the more um, subdivision it's gonna get so every time I lower it it adds more and more and more and it gets smoother so usually I go like all the way down to four so there's just tons and tons of uh, polygons and it makes everything perfectly smooth I guess you could go down to one blow up my computer oh god all right so two my computer can handle two didn't like one so we'll just stay at four to be safe so that's the first part of our thing I just wanted to show you the meta balls but for this actual water effect that I was showing you guys it actually incorporates a couple things it incorporates a uh, emitter and some forces in cinema 4d so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come to simulate we're going to go down to particles and we're just going to grab an emitter so this object um, you can use it for many different things but what we're going to be doing is it's going to act like our tap or whatever is um, flowing the water is going to be flowing out of it so there's the birth rate editor and the birth rate render I usually just keep these to about 40 each. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's do 30 for now. And when you click play, nothing happens. When you click render, you can't see anything. Because technically, the emitter isn't emitting anything. So we have to give the emitter an object to um, create and push out. So that's where our sphere comes back in. I'm just going to go ahead and add a sphere. And I'm just going to make it small. I'm going to make it like 15... Uh, you know what, let's go 10. I'm going to make it 10 centimeters, its radius. And I'm just going to drop the sphere into the emitter, like that. So now when I click play, it's pushing out these spheres. They're actually represented by these little lines. But what we can do is when we click on our emitter, we can go show objects, and it shows our spheres right there. So when we click play, we show it generating our spheres. Alright, now, you're going to probably say this looks nothing like water. 
Well, this is exactly where our metaballs comes in. So if we go under the um, array object and go down to metaball and click on that and just drop the whole emitter into the metaballs, you can see now we're starting to get some um, clumpy, weird looking object that's flowing out of it. And that's the um, emitter emitting the spheres and then the metaballs. The reason it looks so clumpy is just because of our metaball editor subdivision is still really high. So I'm just going to put that to four. And right away we get our um, much smoother look. I might go down to three. And just for this, I'm going to make the timeline 500 frames long so that we can get some de decent play here. And it starts to clump out in this, this big organic kind of thing, whatever you want to um, call it, I guess. Alright, so now water in real life has um, some weight to it and it falls so in Cinema 4D you can actually add forces into scenes so what we're going to be doing to add um, some some forces so that the water falls is we're going to add a gravity object so we're going to come back into simulate we're going to come back to particles and we're just going to go down to gravity and just click that and now the whole scene is going to have some gravity so if I go back to frame one and I play our water starts falling now our metaballs are tumbling and they're falling down so now that I render it's looking much more like water so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find the material that I was using before and it's actually pre-made in cinema 4d if you go under windows and go to content browser um, I'll show you where I found it. If you go to presets under your content browser and then you go to prime then to materials and I believe it was under miscellaneous. Now it was this banshee wrapper it's supposed to be plastic but it mimics water very nicely so I just dragged and dropped that onto our um, metaball object and now when I render, we get this nice, uh, clear, kind of shimmery looking liquid. Uh, you can come into the material and you could, I guess you can, um, maybe, I don't really know how they, exactly how they made the material, but I'm sure if you mess around with some of the speculars and stuff, you can make it more of a, uh, bluish color if, if you really want to. Like if I added blue there and then we went to s this specular, just trying to do this half quick. We added another blue for this specular. Something like that. I don't know if that's going to change. So it kind of adds some blue tinge to the specular where the light hits. Um, I believe a lot of it is this color too. If you just go through like almost every single um, color that's white that that it has in the object, you can you can make it somewhat blue, like this. It's I think white water is more realistic. It's white in real life, but usually people associate water with blue, so you can change it blue quickly if you want. But yeah, so that's just a pretty basic way that you can um, create water for an animation or or something. Um, and it actually looks pretty good. Uh, sometimes they fall apart near the end as the objects start accelerating at, like the spheres start accelerating at a different pace. But um, yeah, it's decently simple. Um, there's n it's nothing too fancy so we got our emitter object that you can you can put anything in the emitter object you can put cubes you can put discs you can put whatever you want but spheres are the best for water because it's got the nice fluid shape that we want but yeah guys that's going to be it for this tutorial um, 
If you like this tutorial, leave a like, and if you guys want to see more of my videos, subscribe, and I usually post, I try to post one a day, but um, yeah, so we'll see you guys next time. See ya.